What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here. After finishing the last four episodes of the Fallout TV show, I gotta say, I'm pretty hyped. The show hitting high scores overall on Rotten Tomatoes by both the fans and critics, it seems like the Fallout show is a straight up hit. The last four episodes of the second season conclude in an epic way. Does it set up a possible season two that can get fans hyped? Does the ghoul finally get a nose? In the first half of the video, me and the crew will give our non-spoiler review discussing what we liked and what we hated. In the second half of the video, we'll give our spoiler opinion on the overall plot points of the final half of the show. But before we jump in, if you like this type of content, drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. You can also support us by joining our crew by becoming an official member. Is the Fallout show season one ending on the right note? Let's jump into it. All right, guys, with that being said, let's jump right into our non-spoiler review and start with our good. And I gotta say, with this season just finalizing so well as it did, there's a whole lot of good things I could talk about, but I think the story was extremely appealing. It really ties in so many different uh, components of kind of mirroring the games in a way, as well as the fact that these characters are shown to be extremely dynamic, meaning that they've changed throughout this entire time and their their goals kind of have been consistent. But at the same time, them as characters have been kind of going back and forth over kind of how they accomplish these goals. And I feel like they've done such a great job for three characters that are brand new. I mean, the, I know the ghoul has a lot of references to older games, but the idea like the ghoul being a, a character that we we get a lot of just kind of backstory to and kind of shaded in mystery and you know why he's the way he is and and why why lucy and maximus are brand new characters but we can feel their emotion we can feel their goals and what they're looking to do and i feel like this this final four episodes of this season really accomplished the main objective of what the show was set out to do was put the world in the a world of fallout in this show and gave us compelling characters that are brand new and made us actually care about them and made us want to see what happens next. And I feel like that's the best thing about the final four episodes is that really, if you were unsure of the first half of the season, which, you know, I know there are people out there that are unsure of it, but if you were on the fence, the second half of the season just took off and, and carried those characters forward in a very good way. So I feel like that was the biggest thing for me. And so, Hockey, what is your good here? Yeah, another action-packed uh, group of episodes here to close it out. And uh, a lot of great surprises, mysteries as well that were kind of explained. Um, we got to see a little bit of, of Lucy's backstory, which was very cool. And it definitely set up for a uh, future um, with, with a, a couple, probably a couple seasons down the line. Um, again, the environment throughout this, these four episodes, they absolutely killed it. Um, and like you said, so many great characters. Uh, and I'm with you, man. When the ghoul is on the screen, he is definitely the best. Just a gunslinger. He's definitely uh, my favorite character. Yeah, I feel like they, they kind of take a lot of uh, the spaghetti western type of character and they use the ghoul like any other like Clint Eastwood type of guy. And you're like, hey, let's inject him into the into Fallout. And that's what we get. Uh, but Angelica, what is your good here? Yeah, I tell you what, they continued the trend from the first half of the season. I thought, you know, the environment was very good and it just continues to amaze on the, you know, like they 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 don't just give you nuggets for Fallout fans. I mean, they put a, a funnel in your mouth and they they drive a whole damn McDonald's uh, chicken nuggets factory down your throat of Fallout stuff in this show. It really is faithful um, when it comes to some of these details and some of these things that they throw at you. And they do a really good job of creating that Fallout environment. And I tell you what, storytelling wise, you know, I actually think they've done a pretty good job of telling a story, probably a little bit even better than some of the Fallout games um, does. So they do take, you know, different themes and different components from different Fallout games. Um, and they do it relatively, uh, not relatively, they do it pretty well. Um, for the most part, for an eight episode. This is a very well-directed uh, show. Even though the pace is pretty fast, we'll get into the not good. But I tell you what, very well-directed with kind of the flashbacks and, and, and going into present time, the music getting mixed in with some key moments um, really does make for enticing uh, an enticing show, whether you're a Fallout fan or not. Think about it, some shows can't even tell a story in 12 episodes. Now you have a show that does it well in eight, right? And with that being said, with the good, we have to talk about our bad and and I'll be honest with you, there's not a lot of bad for me. I think the only thing that gets me concerned about the way that the show kind of continues and finalizes is that officially breaking the whole controversy of saying, well, this game now is officially canon, and now they're actually drifting into the areas of game from the past. 
And that yeah. might be something that I'm actually concerned with. I feel like that's a bad for me because the, the game had a shield around it for being in an area that was not really talked about much in the games. You didn't really have to reference anything from the games. You could just make your own world. The only thing you really had to do was just reference the Fallout, right? And Vault Tech. I and mean, that's a bit basically it, right? But now you're you're drifting into the line between, well, is this canon? Are the lore freak coming after you now? Are they not? And that's the only fear I have for the show is that once they start drifting into that realm, you're going to have to appease even more people. Right now, you're in a good spot. You don't have to do that. And you're just telling the atmosphere of this game, of this universe, and people are ecstatic about it. But now once you get into that that line, you cross that line, it could get ugly, right? And you now need to kind of now make everyone happy. And I feel like that's something that is is fear. is I'm fearful of uh, heading into season two, obviously, and they already approved for season two. But uh, Haki, what is your bad? Yeah, that's the rumors. That, well, that's the, that's the rumors. I mean, I know that there, yeah. there's like I this. I can't whole, imagine it not. I can't. I can't it's it. making yeah, it's so true. much. I know it's making so it's much. Sure. It's making so much success. I mean, even the Fallout 76 is getting a reemergence on Steam at this point. That's how you know. That's how good the show was. Um, but that's yeah. my expectation. I might even go into the Fallout 76 and go play some some of that game. But no. but. But hockey, I heard it's still not the greatest. I'll be honest. I, I but it is said, a lot of people so said yeah, a lot of too. people. A lot of people said that it actually improves a lot of things on Fallout 4. But the game was so broken at launch that no one really wanted to touch it. But because now it's been years since the game was first released, that there's like, all right, well now they fixed it. And on top of that, 60 FPS for all for Fallout, all the Fallout games now. It's like, well, it's it's hit on all the all these things that people want to see. So. Is it something I might go do? I, I honestly was thinking about it. Go play Fallout 76, and apparently the map is, you know, awesome compared to Fallout 4, um, which I was I was a big fan of. I I, I like I like the game. So, H- hockey, what is your uh, what is your bad here? Hey, you guys are gonna have to come up with the bad. I mean, Mars, you, you came up with a pretty good one or, or something to look forward for the future that that might be, you know, on the negative side. I really couldn't come up with a lot, um, you know, throughout the. Uh, episodes we did see some pretty cool creatures if i had to you know say something that i wanted more of that i didn't see uh a lot of i I would probably say some of these crazy creatures you know the ones that they did show us were were very entertaining so um you know in that season two which i definitely think is going to come which i believe you guys do as well uh, i'm hoping that they're going to be you know outside a lot more and and we're going to see you know a ton of uh, crazy stuff I feel like they they show you a skull of Deathclaw. They they didn't never never got to show you Deathclaw, which was something yeah. I was itching for. They maybe showed you a total of maybe four mutated animals. I think yeah. The, yeah. that's that. So that was something that I was really itching that they weren't going to give more of. So that was a, that was definitely something I was thinking about too. But Angelica, what is your bad here? Yeah, that's you know, I, it's funny because there's a lot of talk about how this show compares to the show like The Last of Us, and I think they're very different shows, and they do two things very great, um, but they actually, I, in my opinion, share the same issues that we got out of season one, which is number one, we didn't see enough abominations, right? So the abominations part, you mentioned no a death claw, we only got to see, I think, like you said, a total of four total ones you know we didn't see much ghouls either we did see some but the abominations and ghouls similar to like the last of us where we didn't see a lot of zombies or infected if you want to call it right so like those are the same issues that i see going past and the second one is pacing and i know they did i I gotta say for eight episodes i was pretty impressed but because of the pacing i felt like the brotherhood of steel besides the last episode really fell a little bit shorter than what i was hoping for and we'll probably i'm glad that it's not the finishing story and we'll talk about spoilers like later on I'm glad that it can can continue going forward, but it felt like the Brotherhood of Steel and Maximus wasn't very enjoyable character to me. They're like forcing a love connection, trying to rush this thing past because they only got eight episodes. And those two little, you know, I, I don't want to say like they're really bad because over the good definitely outweighs the bad for this show. But similar to The Last of Us, they had these little things um, that I think hurt both of them in the same realm. Yeah, I feel like that was kind of the issue is that you have to think about they were adding Maximus to Lucy's story so that you could tell two character stories at the same time because they didn't really want to focus on the Brotherhood of Steel yeah. as much as they wanted to. And the fact that even Norm got more screen time than some of the, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel. And he, for him, yeah, it, it, was, it, it was a good so story. It was appealing. In eight episodes, yeah. it's hard yeah. to give everyone their due. Yeah, and that was kind of the issue with me as well. But with that being said, let's jump now into our final verdict. And, and to be honest with you, I went into the Fallout show with very 
low expectations. And I'll be honest, because most game adaptations, and I've done several videos on these, if you go check them out on the channel, but most game adaptations suck ass. And only until recently did we start seeing the golden age of game adaptations really emerge with the Fallout, uh, with with you know Edge Runners from Cyberpunk and The Last of Us, and you know all the League of Legends, and all, we have all these different you know shows are coming as a Super Mario movie. Like these are all now showing that maybe Hollywood actually looks at games stories as as viable options to tell to people who are unsure about them or this fear of a nerdy culture where, where now it's like that is kind of becoming the the cool aspect is looking into some of these things and and now like it i was had low expectations but fallout blew that out of the water i kind of had a feeling when i saw the first trailer and they're showing off all the 50s music and and I knew that this was just about the world of Fallout. This wasn't necessarily copying a game. I was like, hey, it's a lot easier to make a Fallout atmosphere and land it compared to making a Halo show because now you have to mirror all the stories. And if you don't, there's a lot of, you know, dedicated, passionate fans that are going to say, why do you think that your story is better than the Halo story? And you have to either surpass those expectations or at least match them. And that's not an easy thing to do. And clearly, yeah. like Paramount, they sucked ass at it. But the point is, it's a lot of stuff to handle. Like the last HBO did a good job with The Last of Us. And there's sure criticisms, but Fallout su superseded any expectation I had. And I'm going to give this final four episodes a 9.3. This is a top tier show, in my opinion. And I think that this, you could tell the success of Fallout like I mentioned before, when Fallout 76, a garbage game at launch, broken, no one was playing it anymore, has reemerged as getting a lot of people on Steam to go back into the game and play it for themselves. Fallout 4 is getting a reemergence on Steam to go back and play it. New Vegas is getting a reemergence. You're getting all these old ass Fallout games to get people to go back and playing them because they, they loved the show and said, I want to go experience fall out in these other areas that's how you know a successful show does well and that's why i have to give this a top tier grade i think they did a fantastic job with story writing they made me feel connected to these characters and i want to see what happens next i hope we all know there's gonna be season six i am looking forward to it that's like kind of like the feeling you get i can't wait to see what they do next and it 9.3 for me i feel like that's that's a solid grade it's a great grade. so hockey what is your final verdict here yeah, I'm right with you. The uh, first half of the season, I gave a, an 8.6, and I wanted to give it in the 9s, but this one was definitely in the 9s for me. I'm at a 9.4. Um, and listen, this uh, half of the season, this back half of the season, the, the whole season in general, I think the four main things for me, um, acting, environment, writing, and action. Uh, the acting, I thought, was great throughout. Um, the main characters, as well as all the supporting characters, there really wasn't a character... Um, that I thought uh, did uh, hit or did his or her, you know, acting uh, bad, or and that was probably because of the writing. But there was no, you know, character that I hated because you know the acting. And trust me, when we look at Halo, there were definitely characters that we hated, you know, just in general. So the acting, I think, thought was on point. The environment they took right from the game, they killed it. We've been te we've been talking about that from you know the first episode. So that one, I thought they took that perfectly the writing like i said was great a lot of surprises um and they had a lot of stories intertwined as well that i thought they did pretty well with um and then action i thought the action was great they brought the guy from uh the boys in so it was very gory um and it just kept you on your seat the whole time and Angelica, what is your final verdict here yeah i'm at a nine i, I think this is great television and i think fallout stands right next to right near uh the last of us i really do and if you look at rotten tomatoes i think the audience and the critics both tend to agree fallout's at a 94 percent on rotten tomatoes critics wise but 88 percent by their audience and if you look at some of the other recent shows um that have been out for adaptations the last of us was at 96 percent with 89 percent of the audience cyberpunk edge runners although they had a lot less reviews that was at 100 percent by the critics 95% audience, Arcane, 100% of the critics, 96% of the audience. You're seeing they're not that far off from each other. And I actually give those that can do a live service even more credit because it is more difficult. So the Fallout deserves a lot of credit and they do something, again, 
that is not easy to do, right? So you're taking the environment of Fallout and they give you plenty of nuggets to satisfy the hardcore Fallout fans, but they're telling their own story. Now we'll get into spoilers where they might be, you Mars was kind of hinting and they're tiptoeing in a direction that could be dangerous when it comes to the timeline. But for the overall story, they take themes from different fallouts and create their own story to it. And they deserve a lot of credit. And I think this is one of the better adaptations that we have seen over the last few years. And I think it stands toe to toe with a great show like The Last of Us. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I see Fallout go up for some awards this year. Although they do have some good news and bad news. Succession is not this year, right? They finished. That Last of Us had the face, but the House of a Dragon is what Fallout has to face. But I do think they're gonna you're going to see them up for some awards this year. All I do know is that they did some weird things in the show, so they should match the level of weird that the House of Dragon. They may not get to the level to the same level. Know. They do both have incest in some way, but at least at least the Fallout doesn't see as deep as, as House of Dragon goes. They don't, they don't show it, right? They, they don't, don't show, show it. Like they don't show it. They just they talk about it, right? So they at least talk about the weird they talk about yeah, it, but they don't get the to that song. level. Yeah, yeah. They, they do. But with that being said, what do you feel about the Fallout TV show? Are, are you excited for a season two? Do you think they get a season two? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. You can also support us by becoming a member and being officially anointed into the Mars Man crew. But with that being said, we're going to jump into the second half of the video, which is our spoiler discussion. So we'll see you there. Spoiler discussion, guys. And I got to say, I was excited. I, I binge watched four straight episode of the fallout tv show i felt bad for my girlfriend we all we just watched sat there just watched all four episodes and all of a sudden she was getting into it she wanted, wanted to hear about the story now i'm talking to her about the whole thing and it, i think they did a fantastic job and i was hyped going into episode five and it starts out right off the gate with, with maximus and, and thaddeus kind of like all hyped they just got the they got the head now and and you know it was a good touching moment between the two i was like hey wow they're actually you know becoming friends he knights Thaddeus officially becoming his squire, uh, and, and then uh, out of then this is where I kind of look at Maximus kind of side eyed. You actually thought that Thaddeus would be like, "Oh, Maximus, my boy," and he reveals himself, and then instantly he says, "They're gonna kill you, man, if if they find out." And what's and I also think that Maximus was showing his darkness side, where he's like, oh, "I knew I couldn't trust you," and got up and was gonna kill him, right? And Thaddeus actually kind of defended himself by basically taking out his fusion his fusion coil but he also got stepped on by maximus which um, we'll see later is a brutal injury to his foot it was kind of hilarious some of these injuries they do in and fall out or like outrageous oh, like and you're like the foot his foot's basically off at this point and he's just like ah walk. he's like walk, just limping um oh, but yeah you know, at that point it, so he takes out his fusion coil so now he's locked and then maximus is basically screwed and lucy shows up saves him She's getting hit with radiation poisoning, and now he has the choice to actually save her or not. And he straight up lies to her that, oh yes, I am a, uh, I'm a knight. My name is Knight Titus, and and so now they are officially now working together, and they're gonna go and, and basically go find the head together. Which I thought, hey, you know what? It wasn't an outrageous concept to have Lucy and Maximus work together because they kind of had a moment earlier when they fought against the ghoul. I had a feeling that this was gonna happen. Um, and you know what? I also make sense with the whole not telling the truth. It's just like it just kind of goes along with the whole wastelander kind of uh, idea uh, that no one can trust each other. And right from this spot, we're going right into the vault, right? And the, the vault storyline is starting to become very interesting. You have Norman and Chester investigating Vault 32 on what the hell happened, and it basically goes from the part where they they were investigating it in the previous the end of the previous episode, and you know. They, they saw everyone was murdering each other. Everyone was like died. And it was like, they, we all know the truth, we know this and that. And it was, it was pretty brutal, right? And then they're trying to get into Vault 31, which they said it was part of the reason why Vault 32 has gone insane. But what's, what's crazy is they end up having elections for uh, the new overseer. Uh, basically, Betty has this as a landslide victory. And all the other overseers are kind of all butthurt about it. And he has some pretty funny scenes where he's like explaining yeah. why I'm not voting for yeah, you. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not voting like, for you, by it. the way. He's like, yeah, yeah. I know, I, I get it. I know yeah. you're not voting for me. Um, and uh, I think that's the kind of, it's just kind of showing you that they're, uh, <laughs> it was just kind of interesting where it was just, it was like a little fun scene. Betty was going to win. And there's also just a lot of like kind of secrecy going along with the vault, right? And I th feel like it's what they did to make it interesting was that they, 
they basically are saying that everyone who's who's voted for has some connection to Vault 31, right? Yeah. Whether it was Norman's father who was from Vault 31, Betty was from Vault 31, um, it, it, everybody was connected to that. But it's also in a in a just a realm of secrecy, meaning that like there's always been this Vault 31 that we've never seen to this point. But all we do know is that it's like near perfection. Like there's no if no issues ever behind it and now there's some seems to be something that norman's finding that they're like all these people are connected they, they've been the last like five overseers have always been from fault 31 and he's like why is that the case what well, coincidence is not something that he is okay with at this point um but now it's like where it the, the main storyline of episode five was focusing around norman in the vault and lucy and maximus and i feel like then we get a really good scene between max lucy and bandits and they get to like it was kind of a mixture of a comedy act and kind of just the str the tensity that you could see random people on the road and what they are and so the bandits and and Max and them are all like we we put our hands up but Max the whole time was like just give me your gun we got to kill them we can't trust these guys and Lucy being the ignorant person she is is like no 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 we, we we can avoid violence right they end up doing the whole like musician like walk and mirroring each other but then like you know as you get closer you find out that they basically have these knives and and basically they try to kill lucy and max takes a bullet and then caps both of them and he straight up says yeah they're fiends that they're gonna eat us um and it's just like she's like what what the hell is wrong with everyone here like this is this is so horrid but that's kind of the, the atmosphere of fallout it's like anything can kill you and i feel like that's always kind of the reason why i was so like we need to see more mutated animals because that was like that was the, always the fear with fallout when i played it was like I was walking down the street. I'm like, oh, this is a nice day. And a random animal shows up. And now I got to fight this mutated horseshoe crab and then have to hope that I don't die and I have to walk my ass all the way back to where I was before. Like, that's kind of always been the intensity of Fallout games. But I didn't really get to see as much of those animals. But that moment kind of made me feel like that. Now, I feel like one of the interesting things that we get is like almost back and forth where then it comes back to Norman and he's just like, you know, he's finding out more and more about this whole he's like if everything goes glum vote 31 it's like he's finding all this information then he goes tries to talk to chester who's who's you know he's dating or he's with steph who is also from vault 31 and he was just like listen and he actually tried something really sly he he talks directly to steph and was like oh how what makes 31 so amazing steph and she just shows oh, what's so met, different about 31 yeah, what's, so, what's so different about 31 than here and she goes oh maybe it's just the mashed potatoes and he was just like, I know something's wrong here. She's not saying. Yeah, like and, my dad said the same thing. Yeah, like my yeah, he's just like my dad said the same thing, and, and he's just like, he just backs out, and he just realized like there's something up that no one's saying, and I feel like that was a good scene because it shows you like, like there's something up, and there's no one wants to talk about what's thirty, what's wrong with thirty one, or what's happening there, and and that's what made this this whole concept like like very. You know very unique to me like i feel like that was like this whole like i was nervous about the vault story in the beginning and then this whole thing got me like what is 31 what the hell is going on yeah. in this vault right norman, and, uh, norman carried norman carried this episode this was actually the slower one of the second half of the season yeah. and norman carried it with this whole vault um with the whole vault story yeah and and when we get to back to max and lucy they also then come back with another great scene where they enter into shady sands which is the new california republic and it's completely decimated and lucy's heartbroken because max is like yeah we tried there was there was a restart of our civilization and uh it failed right and she thought her whole purpose in life being a vault dweller was to restart you know civilization and now it just kind of breaks her whole mindset about what's going on and what's going to happen and Right from there, like Max is injured and now she has to go get medicine and they both get teleported and like, you know, where the hell they were. And it goes right back to Norman. And I think this is the one of the biggest scenes of the entire Vault storyline is when they're going to go check into Vault 32. This is after Betty's elected and they're walking in there and the entire place is cleaned out. And they're showing the scenes of as Norman and Chester are walking through everywhere they looked there was a dude that died like a toaster oh perfect toaster yeah. that was a toaster someone killed himself with there was the there was all these dead bodies and they're like all cleaned and everything and to the point where he like walks in and betty's like oh you know it's a it's basically like walks up to him like oh you like what you see and he's just like good cleaning job like almost like he is he is almost like basically trying to reference to her like 
I know what you did. Like, I know what you did to this place to make it look so different. And I, and it was just kind of and one of the scenes then, you know, was was kind of talking about, um, you know, what happened to my mother's, uh, what my other, my, it was, I think it's called Ripper. I forget what call it. The Pit the Boy. Right. And what happened to the Pit Boy? And Betty said, you know, that, that her and, and her, her and your father buried the, the Pit Boy with your mother. Right. And we all know once that she said that, that has a bunch of BS because we know that wow. the Pit Boy unlocked Vault 32. And it's yeah. like, if that was true, then that wouldn't have happened. So it just confirms that Norman's suspicions are completely correct. And it's that's how essentially what yeah. how it ends with Lucy and Max looking out after they're saved and realize that they're in a whole completely different vault, right? And now just like you're starting to see the full picture. There's a lot of vaults out there. There's a whole lot of stories going on with what, what are these vaults? What is the point of them, right? And yes, they're they're supposed to be for restarting civilization, but clearly there's something going on within the vaults, right? And what Vault Tech set up, so. I just want to kind of get your feeling about like this vault story to me was extremely appealing. They did a great job setting up for, you know, even for future seasons, if they get them, obviously, but they, they can jump into so much more with that. But uh, Haki, what did you feel about this vault story? I know that was a big one that we saw from episode five. Yeah, so I thought they did a, a great job. Um, you know, the, the vault mystery started heating up in the last couple episodes. And, you know, we had thought, and, and I think Langelica had, had said that, you know, Norman in, in the beginning was, was a little bit of a lackadaisical character, I guess. We almost thought it was going to be uh, Quanish, you know, but he, you know, is definitely carrying that, that story. Um, and, uh, and and r remind me of the, the gentleman's name that does... Uh, uh, with Sorry. the blonde guy again, uh, the blonde girl. Oh, Chester. Ah, yes, yeah, Chester. Yes. Yeah. So oh, right. so Chester, right? For short. Um, yeah, yeah, we were the, calling. Yeah. 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 What's going on with Chester is is absolutely hilarious. Kind of just stuck in uh, in in an absolute mess. Um, but yeah, so that that whole story, um, the 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 vault uh, story, very very cool. Uh, but the story that I uh, really liked, or the scene that I really liked, was that bridge scene. Uh, very cool. Not like a Broadway uh, show. There, you know. Uh, had to both raise their hands, walk through the bridge. Uh, but yeah, it showed that, you know, you can't trust anyone. Uh, but it showed you Lucy wanted to, you know, she came from what she thought was, um, you know, a very peaceful place and she wants to trust everyone. And, you know, Max had to take a bullet for her. Yeah. And Lajilka, what did you feel about this vault story? I feel like it, it kind of, it was the most dominant story of this episode. And, yeah. and you don't really see, to be honest with you, you don't really see another vault with Vault 33 until the very next episode. Like, uh, actually, yeah. no, at the end of this ep of the next episode is really where you see the Vault return, to be honest. No, no, yeah, the, I think sorry, the, episode yeah, seven this, is where this you episode, see it. I thought it was starting off slow, so like, you know, after the mid-season, they usually do, And but the Vault stuff was the most intriguing thing. Um, and the whole, you know, they do a really good job of just creating this uncertainty and that like Norm is trying to figure it out um, and put the pieces together and it gets, hazier and hazier as time goes on um but that that to me is the mo i talked about it on the last episode in part one that i feel like this vault thing is really becoming more and more intriguing and boy it was um and this continued with this one um as for the maximus stuff Maximus is such a weird character for me because there's times that he is the dumbest character in the show right um and like his intelligence you know how you can level up stats he definitely doesn't level up his intelligence um no his intelligence stats and in fallout um or his charisma so some of the things i don't understand about him but i tell you what uh the bridge scene was one that was good um some of the other stuff i hate maximus drives me crazy but for the bridge stuff i thought that was a good scene again it shows that maximus has been out on the wasteland longer than lucy um and he kind of knows like you can't you know lucy is naive to this kind of stuff and and maximus um goes out and pretty much saves them yeah, I feel like that was kind of like the. There's so many great, great parts. It starts slow, but then it just kind of jumps into a lot of great things. And with that being said, episode six, and this is the thing about episode five, there was, there was no ghoul right the whole time, and he was my favorite character, and no ghoul, and it picked up. And now it starts with episode six with the ghoul, and it goes actually starts with him as as Cooper Howard. You now he's doing his advertisement for the vault, and this is that famous like uh, trailer scene black and white he's doing the he's basically in a vault and he's kind of talking 
that you know with that family and he's saying hey you know you're so you're a family of scientists this is gonna be a whole plate vault uh, vault four right you're gonna be running this entire place of scientists you know thank you guys you're amazing i i served in the military but you guys uh you know you guys are the real heroes here and all that stuff great propaganda commercial like i gotta say great propaganda i think that that was kind of a great thing to see with with how fallout always is like this that they always create these false you know false advertisements to get people excited and eventually set up with that and and then at this advertisement this this event you know you know we get a lot of great scenes with cooper howard like he you know i love the character talking about you know with a lot of vault tech uh with bud i think it's bud uh, atley or something was the uh the higher end uh employee for vault tech and he's like all oh, hyped like oh you know, we have all these i'm helping i helped design the uh, the t60s uh and he's like oh yeah well the t45s uh we i wore them in the war and it literally caused so many of our my friends to die because they were not protective yeah, yeah they were a fault on the fault, the the fault in them yeah. yeah in the chest plate and so many of my friends died because of it so i re- so you're the one i can thank for that um and he was kind of like throwing so much shade at the guy and just like damn he's he's cooking him right now he's cooking his ass and then his wife is did you really find out here his wife works for vault tech which i i didn't really you didn't really get that pickup you thought that she was at the, the hollywood studio and she didn't really you didn't really know she was a member of fall tech but now you find out she works there right? and now they're gonna have this grand party at the house you know house is house is solid right? it's a pretty massive house a lot of cool stuff there uh and and he's having a big old party decked out with all of his stuff and um basically it's, it's kind of crazy how uh they, they he goes there and starts talking about like and this is actually where it brings in like that historical component this is like supposed to be the 50s so there's like that fear of communism that's spreading through all of hollywood and there's a bunch of their friends who are being arrested for being communists and and obviously this is a different this is the dystopian history of basically how there's a whole there was a whole great war that's still happening between the communists and, and the western nations and everything so you know it's it's causing all this all these issues to get worse and worse and and their friend his friend is actually uh ironically they, he's the voice of the robots that we've been talking about those like server yeah. servant robots and it was kind of like funny that he's like I hell, I, he's like hell i'm even i'm even selling myself like a whore like I, i'm my voice is the robot servant uh and he's like we all kind of go through that and right from there like it, it goes cuts to him as a ghoul and now he's being arrested by sheriff troy now you're getting this new faction brand new group of people we haven't seen yet part of the government with the spelling it horribly um, and it's like there's supposed to be a new faction in that area and that's what fallout's about fallout was the best especially when you think about new vegas and and fallout 4 when they have these bunch of factions and they're all different they're trying to answer the question of how do you solve the problem of this fallout society how do you create a government that meets the needs of the people right that's kind of what the story, whole story is about and they did a funny little thing there and now we cut to vault four and now we're seeing how uh, vault four basically was a place where a lot of uh, people that were from shady stands became like refugees into vault four one of the weird points and this is what fallout's always known for they're kind of like healing up and then lucy's just like hey you just want to have sex and you're just like what, what is what is happening forced. like uh, it was kind of just so like forced. it was kind of just like weird because so i'm sitting here and like i said i'm sitting here with my girlfriend watching the episode and she's just like wanna wanna have sex and then they're talking about how you know what you, you mean hard and you burst like i don't know if i want it's like a pimple i don't want to do that and you're like jesus christ and i was like trying to explain like maybe maybe it's because this is a their experimentation and they're trying to like pump them with I pheromones lie. or something but no. I, don't, I just i was overthinking it i just think no, they just Lucy wrote in some real over at a yeah, thousand yeah and, her. and and max is a loser <laughs> yeah max you just, want, doesn't, you just want the husband and yeah max is the loser <laughs> I just it was kind of just so random yeah, um, of course. it's like a forced love thing they're creating no I, I just think and I just think that like it was just so stupid but I was just trying to explain away like I just it's of course it was definitely the uh, pheromones they shot him with <laughs> I, I just bullshit yeah, at stupid. that point it's gotta be pheromones uh, it's gotta it. make sense it's gotta they just most have shot with pheromones or whatever um but then they like they're eating they're eating food or whatever and, and Max is obviously like he's he's like concerned he's like I don't trust anyone here. I don't know where we are. I don't know vaults. Lucy's trying to relax. And then all of a sudden she's looking around and she's seeing dudes with an extra nose on their forehead and another eye, like another mouth, like all, all this stuff. Like they, and I, part of me was like, there must be radiation, like poisoning that they were impacted because of the shady sins. And it's, it's kind of funny. Cause then vault four, 
the overseer has one eye and it's just like yeah. you know it made me laugh even more knowing that this dude is cyril from archer made me die laughing because it was just every time you hear him you're like literally it's just like of course it's this guy like of course this guy i didn't even so realize it yeah that's a good point that's i was just funny. like of course yeah, it's you know, from, uh, rick and morty you know the, yeah the... he's also jerry from rick and morty i'm like yeah, of course of course it's him like it would only be funny so is it's him um and like so then like they're just like this is so there's something off here and it's true because there there has to be something explainable I was thinking it has to be radiation poisoning. These are people from Shady Sands. It makes sense. Um, but you find that even later on with the overseer talking to Lucy about everything, he's like, no, I, I've been here my entire life. I'm not from Shady Sands. He was like actually pretty racist. He's just like, I, I think refugees is a horrible thing. They're gross as hell. They're weird. And he's got like this one eye. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, there's, there's no, there's no decency anymore. I like, get all this stuff. And he's got a lot. Of, like, it's just like, so you're actually from here and, and you find out later on that this used to be a facility where they were all experimented on. And these are descendants of people who of were the, part uh, of that experimental play, uh, the experimental vault. And what's funny is vault four is exactly the vault that uh, Cooper Howard was talking about in that, in that opening scene. So it's talking about those scientists were experimenting yeah. on people the entire time. And, and you see that later on with the you know with video tape, which we're going to talk about in a moment, that, yeah, that they end up rising up and killing all the scientists and they replace them with themselves, right? That was kind of part of it. Um, but I feel like what's what's funny is, is that, you know, I think that the next scene with the ghoul going a flashback, he's talking with his wife about vault and now it's like, apparently, you know, you can't, you know, you can't have a dog in the vaults. And he's like, well, why? Well, what's the, you know, what's the, what's the issue? Why are they... Who's making all these rules about everything? And, and it kind of ties directly with, you know, Cooper, Cooper's friend basically is, um, he's a communist and he's basically saying, hey, you know, listen, you know, you're my friend. I, you should come to see a meeting. And he keeps saying to him, like, you you're, think you're believing too much of all this BS that vault is feeding you. And he's telling them, like, why is it that vault has the capabilities of the U.S. military is giving them all this wealth and all this power? And you know that what are they doing with it? Why are we giving them all this power and they aren't answering to anybody but their own private company, right? And he's not wrong. And he says, you should come to the meeting. You'll learn all the truth you need to know, right? And at the same time, he's thinking to him, he's a, he's kind of like thinking about that. And that causes some resentment between him and Barb because now they're like, you know, the, who, why are you trusting them so much? Like, why do you, how do you know that this is, you know, the right thing? And she, and she's, saying we're trying, trying to secure a vault for us that we can have a higher level vault so we can basically be protected forever and you can just smell the bad problem here right it, if you're a fan of the games you know the issue but if you're not you're just saying there's something off about this vault tech and what they're doing right and you're trying to believe best of what barb's saying but it's also at the same time like you're in the shoes of of cooper and you're like i don't know who these people are and they have so much power over this situation right and so then you're getting right in back in the vault four and, and it's what ends up crazy is maximus is trying to find the fusion core then all of a sudden you know he's been giving a house he gets he eats all these sweets and he's like living the life he is a robe yeah. and at the yeah. same time lucy's like oh let me go check out this tradition that all these vault people are doing and they're getting some wild stuff they get yeah. naked they're they're singing to the to the hell mother and they find out the hell mother is Moldaver, who is yeah. literally the the, la the rebel leader of uh, the raider leader that it's took so Lucy's bad. father. And she's just Again, like naked, talking about yeah, the naked, one. talking about the hey, like hey, you should come check this out. Oh, it's a little wild for my taste. One of the like <laughs> one of the fall guys, like you're, you're not kidding, bro. Um, and you know they obviously since she's just like there's some there, these people are wacko. There's something wrong with this vault. And Max is like I love it here. I'm getting all these. I'm getting to eat all this stuff. They're nice people. All this. And she's like. We need to, and then he's like, "Oh, you want to have sex now?" Like it's just weird stuff going on. And, and yeah. <laughs> it's the pheromones, I'm telling you. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, Lucy's like, "I need to go figure out what the hell's going on here. Why well, don't you go find out what's in level twelve, which is the vault level that no one wants to talk about, and figure this whole thing out?" And it goes then right back to the ghoul, and you know, he's taken by government, uh, and he's talking to this, the leader of the government, Sorrel Booker, who is the mayor or the governor or whatever you want to call it, right and apparently. The president, the they, president. they pay, essentially have history. Like they don't really, they talk about they have history. They know they know each other, um, and that he, you know, obviously the ghoul's an outlaw. He's they've had a deal with each other before, 
and the ghoul just he claps everybody he he picks on the the sheriff guy and basically calls him oh i think i knew your dad you're, you're are you a bitch like your dad was and he just gets him to try to do something destroys everybody and then one scene that that got me and i was like to come up with a bunch of conspiracies he sees a picture of moldaver and he's like oh yeah i know um i've seen her before but she doesn't look the same way where i, I remember her and right off the bat and I, i'll tell you right now i was taking a bold take like I, I always said to my girlfriend that's her daughter that's his daughter I'm calling it i was completely wrong completely false but i was thinking that fallout 4 did a similar thing where you know it's like oh my my child's taken and years pass and it's completely different not yeah, trying to not ruin anything years, yeah not 200 years but i was just yeah. like but at the same time they're both like similar age right so i i feel like the whole time loop that they're creating doesn't make any sense it doesn't make yeah. any sense well Daver should be dead if she is actually yeah. living a normal life the ghoul is a ghoul that's surviving by yeah, by we'll freaking, that in yeah and the drugs and all that stuff so that doesn't make any sense so that's how the episode ends and i feel like the finally getting to see ghoul back here made the episode great I, I, i'll be i think any brief things for that i feel like i want to talk about the next stuff but go ahead Linjoko. you want to say something here yeah i mean we got the two episodes left i'll just say this this is where kind of the big up uh, first i love some of the scenes that we saw in vault four uh with the comedic factor and, and that's um you know with some of the dark humor the the only thing i don't love is this kind of forced love thing that they were trying to create with lucy and maximus um but outside of that this is where a lot of people were getting upset especially in the fallout community the new vegas one because of when lucy went into the school they talked about shady sands downfall right and it was the year on the chart it was 2277 the problem is the game new vegas happens in 2281 so the big like conversation here is the one they call it the fall of sandy shades is you know is that when the bomb dropped was in 77 because if that's true that then that makes the game that happens in 81 a little strange right that's where the time you know the timeline issue are they retconning new vegas that's kind of the big question especially maximus who was there during the bombing right so what exactly and this is in what is it 97 the the show is going on so this mm. is almost 19 years later um or 20 years later from the, the time of the show is 20 years after the fall of sandy shades based on the chart that they had so i just wanted to kind of bring that up i can understand why there's some people like what exactly does this timeline mean and are they retconning uh new vegas yeah i feel like that's kind of what the fear is is that when when the writers then say this is canon you know it's like well now you're saying that new vegas is not a part of like this fallout timeline it's is that drop in 77 like yeah. they could have dropped later but they're not again maximus was there so how much later can it be he was a child there so that's the hard part on what's going on and that's like yeah. something that they're gonna have to come out at some point and explain like yeah. no i think they this is what we're trying to say you know maybe we wrote this and we meant this like that's that's something they're gonna have to say because you're gonna get a whole lot of fans angry yeah. that you're oh, going right. to that you're, they're, they're already, already angry yeah. that you're already like diminishing new vegas as like no like our things canon that's not as canon as you think yeah. and now you're like you're downgrading new vegas as and it's one of the best fallout games ever so you're gonna downgrade that game that's gonna piss off a lot of people right and i think and then it goes I, i'm gonna kind of jump into episode seven uh, hockey you want to say anything for episode six i feel i feel like i want to get to the juicy stuff because we're getting to the last two episodes anything you want yeah, to yeah i mean episode six i mean you know the cool scene was cool um you know the 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 thing about the vault with the that whole kind of bohemian grove kind of weird thing i thought chief was going to be in there you know pablo shriver was going to be in there butt naked you know doing some doing some you know, ritual, you know, too, you know? <laughs> yeah but no i, I mean the, the episode in general was, was good but so yeah some definitely some weird stuff there dude now we're getting into the final two and in, in episode seven the radio starts off with new like just a brand new the two people family that are gathering medals and then the ghoul's already sitting there eating dinner and you know great scene makes it seem like oh he might have eaten the daughter he's like oh, oh you thought i ate her like no you're you you must be on something because i would never do that and he basically was uh was talking to uh both of them and saying that you know i know that your brother was a part of moldaver's like cult 
right? And that, you know, there's this basically saying that, uh, that essentially because they're connected, Isaac, I know you're connected. I know that you know where Moldaver is. And I had to take care of your, your brother, right? From when they got the bounty from Mal Moldaver. So it's like, you're going to tell me where it is or I'm going to kill you both. And then he then said, once he gets the information, he's just like, well, you know what? I know that you're gonna, your son's gonna come after me at some point. I might as well deal with this now. And you know, it's a pretty messed up scene. He kills the, yeah. he kills the son, and then he just walks out. And it's a, it's a brutal scene. And you're like, damn, the ghoul is a pretty messed up guy, even though he's, yeah, a, he's one of my favorite characters. He's not a great yeah. guy. He's just, he's just a badass. That's really what he is. He, this is why, like, it's like the western about like the good, the bad, the ugly. It's like that's kind of what they're building with this Fallout show with between the three characters in a way. Um, it's just like. The ghouls, the ghouls, the ugly. He's not a great guy. He's he's a messed up dude. And uh, then you kind of then find out in Vault Four, you go back to Vault Four again that you know there was a testing facility, and that basically each vault you you, you find out is testing on somebody because she they gets arrested. Yeah, yeah, she's getting she yeah, she got arrested for basically being in level twelve, and you know they tell her like every vault like so what was your vault testing on? And she's like, yeah, what, what do you one. mean? And like we don't have testing, they're like oh, uh, well, yeah. Even though you're ignorant, doesn't mean that you're you're can't be uh, in trouble. And it just now confirms to you that Vault 33 is doing something. Like, there's something with yeah. Vault 31 and, and testing on something. And that was something I remember from the games when playing, because I was like, I was like thinking in my mind, I I remember vaults always tested on people, and like and then I then this happened. I was like, yes, I, I thank God, I, I that was confirmed to me, because I was like. Am I losing my mind? I literally thought that that was the case. Um, and then it goes to when they, the funny scene where they're gonna like, they're gonna kill Lucy, and it's like I banish you to death by exiling you. And then he's just cutting the, he's cutting the rope, the, sawing the, the rope off. Um, and hey, like, get this sharpened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought that was a funny that was, scene. That was pretty funny. It, it shows you that they're like, just they. Here's a week's worth of food and supplies. Yeah, and here's, yeah. Yeah, here's <laughs> two weeks of food and supplies. It's like, don't worry, someone will carry it after. I will carry it off. Yeah. And then in comes Max is ruining it. Max just ruins the whole thing, just destroying everybody. I was like, I, I thought he was, was like, so I, I thought he was going to start that killing people. That was not bad. That was no, kind of that's, funny. that's like, but that's the thing. Like, they, they, they have the dark humor that makes you like, like, what? And then, like, it's just something that stuff is weird, but like, that, they did a good job with the comedy and making it feel like the stupidness of Fallout. Like, that's kind of what some of the things they sometimes go a little bit overboard in some of the things yeah, they, they do. do. But I the just idea think the love is, stuff, like the love connection, they should have let it bake a little longer. Especially, yeah. you know, I was like, okay, they're rushing it because they only got one season. But if it goes beyond, they should have let it bake a little longer. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I think by the end of the season would have made more sense. They kind of got it to like this part where, you know, after they basically leave, you know, Max has the fusion coil. She's like, I, I don't want them to all die because they lose power. I feel off about it. And he basically chooses to go with her without his armor. And that is a pretty big moment for Max. That was his whole goal was to become a knight. Yeah. And he basically gave that up for her. Right. And I feel like that was something that, you know, well, clearly, clearly he wants to clap the cheeks, but it's the whole idea is like, well, he he's now changing as a character. Right. And that's kind of why, in my opinion, that the, the show did a great job with that. They, they're showing character motivation changing for, for certain reasons. Right. For Max's sake, he really likes Lucy. He wants to be with her, right? He wants yeah, to be with he her, lies and, to her, and he then lies, he's like, yeah. "Screw it, live with me anyway." Yeah, like he's yeah. like, "Well, you know what? Since I've been on the surface, I've uh, threw acid on a guy's face, yeah, I've killed funny. people. You know, like I think you're fine by not by lying to me about your name." Right. He's like, "The wasteland just sucks, right?" And he's like, "Sorry, I got out of that pretty easily. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, that was fine." And, and that was, and then they're kind of walking off, and they eventually see, uh, they, you know, they now they're getting to. Thaddeus and this is this is just yeah. funny. I get the I like we get Thaddeus. the Thaddeus. Lie, Thaddeus is a good he's character. Thaddeus. Yeah, Thaddeus is pretty funny. He he you know he's he's hurting his foot's basically detached at this point. Um and you know he he also also locks the um locks the dog away in the beginning of the episode. I didn't get to mention that. Uh, he locks the dog away and which is pretty messed up. Um my girlfriend was really angry about that. They hated him for that. Like, he said, dog he's gonna die. if it had an air hole. I know the dog dog meat's gonna die. And I was like, I made a good reference. Like, yeah, that's dog meat. They reference dog the dog meat's character name from the Fallout games. Like, that's always been Fall Forest said that. It's like kind of a little throwback there. Um, but he sees a doctor who was banging the chickens from the other episode. 
Um, and he's like some. So he's what's funny is I had subtitles on so I can see the names and everything. And they called him the uh, snake oil salesman. That's his name. It's just snake oil salesman. So and he's like, about to off himself. Yeah, he's about to off himself. <laughs> and then, in his mouth. Oh, oh, wait. So funny, Here you go. <laughs> hey, I got something for you. And then it gives him medicine. You know something's wrong with it. And it just tells you that, like, he's like, oh, yeah, you don't have to worry about being radioactive anymore. His foot, his foot heals. Yeah. yeah foot heals instantly, but now it's like, heal. you're not to be radioactive. And I honestly thought to myself, not that he was the, the, the fast forward. They found out he is a ghoul now, a ghoul. right? Based because, you know, he ejected him with the serum. Now he's a ghoul. He heals faster. But you're on a ticking cl time clock now, right? With with how you might become a ghoul, like a, a feral ghoul later on. Um, I thought he was going to be a mutant. I thought he was going to be like, you know, those ogre looking dudes. The, uh, um, you know, oh, good, I, good point. I thought yeah. that's what he was going to be. Because I mean, oh, we didn't man. see any of that. We didn't see that yeah, that's another thing. either. That's another and thing I was I like, early, yeah. I was like, I told the girlfriend, I was like, I think he's gonna be the mutant because like those guys are pieces of garbage back in Fallout. And I was like, I had a feeling um, it would actually fit per perfectly well with how the show was going at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, then you go into Vault Thirty Three, you find out Betsy, Betty is a badass, poisoning all of the raiders. They all dying and they're like pooping their pants and. They have to no, get we rid don't of. Know. She says, yeah, see, oh, "Words matter. We don't know happen. who poisoned them." Can't believe someone did this. You know, like yeah. it's only causing hysteria. And then she get, puts out all the assignments, and instantly right after, puts all the assignments in for everybody, and they tell you whether you're going to Vault 32 or you're staying in Vault 33. Um, and I think one of the the funniest scenes, or funniest scenes, but actually a good scene by by Chet or Chester, was Norman goes. He's like, "You're actually going to go through with it." He's like. Yeah, man, I don't have any other option at this point. He's like, well, you're a coward. He's like, we're all cowards. We we're, live in a vault. Everyone, we're all living a vault. Like, I like, the, yeah, it was just like, that's, that's, true. that's the point. That's kind of why the vault dwellers were always seen as like bitches. Because they were like, you guys, you yeah. got, and that's what happened in the first like two episodes when the merchant lady said to Lucy, like, you guys hid in your vault underground while you left everyone else out here to basically die and kill each other. So like, you guys are out. Right. Um, then he didn't come to save your ghoul finds dog meat, gets him out, and then we get some. We get like the pretty intense moment where you know the uh, you know Cooper Howard goes to the communist meeting, sees Moldaver there. She gives him a. She basically they're going back and forth about this whole communism is not that bad. And Voltec, you really like Voltec? She's, she's not a communist. I'm not a communist, but I'm just trying to help the people. And she basically just says, you know, Voltex uh, pretty evil and all that stuff. And, you know, he starts to kind of believe her a little bit. And she says, here's a listening device. I want you to, you know, use it on your wife and figure out some your wife. Right. And I was like, all right, now we're getting some we're getting some spicy stuff here because now he's starting to think I maybe I got to spy my wife to see what's going on. And we go right back to the right back to the whole Thaddeus situation where, you know, he's got the head. He sees Lu uh, Lucy and Max tries to shoot at him misses completely on every shot that he takes and he didn't have a scope yeah he didn't even have a scope i don't have a scope i couldn't see it right um and you know they they basically like at the same time they see brotherhood of steel show up that is like i gotta go i'm you know they, they basically said you're cool man like and he's like if they find out i'm cool i'm dead i gotta get out of here maximus says i'm gonna find it. it's a random ass head starts pounding the head in and says oh here's his head it's gonna work at least i'll stall him and you know, it says you take the head, you go to Moldaver, I'll slow him down, I'll find you later on. They kiss, all good stuff. And then it kind of ends with the transition from Vault the people from Vault 33 into Vault 32. And they have some great music of all of them kind of going into you know Vault 32 and they elect the uh one eye the one eyed girl, I forget her I forget her name, Sarah, I think it was Stephanie. her name. Uh, Stephanie. No, uh the, yeah, Stephanie, yeah. Stephanie, she's the overseer of Vault 30. Of Vault 32, she was also from Vault Vault 31. It's just con continuing the issue going forward. Um, and then you know Norm schemes his way. I don't know how Betty. No one realized that Norm snuck his way into the overseer's office. You know, hold ass hacker. there. You know, typed in, hacked it, and then sends a message to Vault 31 overseer and says, "I need to get in." You're you know, he at goes. Top level. Yeah, sneaking in top level. He's just that he's uh he's technical levels or the top tier gets into the vault and it, that's how the episode ends. And now the scenes of Nally is like this is epic. Like, this is gonna yeah, get best us. Episode, best yeah. episode of the season. 
Oh, yeah. And you could tell they, they went all out with the budget, clearly. I mean, you, you, you could tell they had several T-60 soldiers this whole in the beginning. I can't, even, the I, can't even, I can't even fathom oh. seeing five and dudes in armor two. like to that extent. I can't even fathom that. So, you know, Maximus is going to the Brotherhood of Steel. They have the, all the group there. You know, they all look straight up badasses. He goes and brings the head to the headmaster and like instantly he's like, dude, like, no, this is not the head. And he's like, you're going to die. And he's like, I know where it is. And then they have a whole talk and they say, you know what? You are a warrior. He's like, you know, T Titus, he basically calls Titus a bitch. He's like, yeah, you know, you, you, you take power. And that's how we all got to this point. We took this power. And I think in the new realm of the Brother of Steel, I'll be the headmaster and you're going to be my knight. Like, and we'll set the world in the right direction. And now it sets up Maximus to be kind of like becoming a higher level guy. Like yeah, within, which, which I don't know I, I, I did, why. Yeah, I was a little kind of like, damn, that. you went from being a squire to now being second in command to the headmaster. I can, I can yeah. be, I can say, you know what? Give, give Maximus a knight's armor and let him prove himself as a knight. Maybe yeah. anointing him a knight makes sense. Not saying, hey, you will be my second command going or forward. Or if you get us the fusion coil, you'll be a knight. You know, like set that up. Yeah. Where it's like, I don't trust you fully, but I'm going to give you one more chance type of thing. Something like that. So now, now it's like, like Max like misses your in. Gym. You're yeah. second in charge. Like, damn, you're a cool ass guy. <laughs> you're, you're second in command. You're like, you know what I mean? Like, me, but you, get yeah. the you know what I mean? It feels like they could have at least given it where Max yeah. has a very like predicament, whether he Let needs to just go with Lucy or he Let finally can fulfill his dream and actually become a knight. Like that would have been a better moment for that. But then Lucy brings the head to Moldaver. You know, the, there are some of the ghouls that she saved was there. Uh, I think that was a pretty cool thing that you kind of see like, hey, she does have impact. That kind of happens in Fallout games. So I feel like they did a good kind of callback there. And then, you know, then we were like constantly moving. Ghoul gets a flashback to when he's now listening to his wife at the vault Tech. She has a big ass meeting. And now he needs to go into vault Tech to hear what she's saying. And it's just constantly moving. It goes to Lucy meeting Moldaver. And at the table, there's a ghoul there. Moldaver's eating her dinner, and she's like, badass, just plops the head on her desk like, I got the head, right? I just want my father back. Where I want to get out of here. She's just like, okay. And she starts, takes out the, you know, the the, the fusion, you know, basically if, if, uh, cold fusion, and starts setting it up. And then she's like, that's all. I, I just want my dad. That's all I need at this point. And then Moldaver starts telling her where her dad was from. And this is where it gets great, because now... We're going as Moldaver is talking about the conversation, goes to the ghoul while having a flashback, and he's inside Voltec building. He gets walked in by, uh, he was walked in by by uh, assistant Betty, and you know you walk in and he's sitting down waiting for his wife, and now having a meeting between Voltec and other major corporations, and these are the corporations essentially that own the world, like own the United States, are so important within the entire United States and what power they have. And they're basically just going back and forth. And Voltec says, our goal is to combine with all of you, create basically like a man-made monopoly, like like just combine together and we will control all the vaults and you can do whatever you want to come up with your solution of what's the best type of vault going forward. You wanna, you wanna like, you know, and they all of a sudden, they start coming up with crazy ass ideas. Like we can experiment on people and like, see who's the best person. Maybe we can make super soldiers. And it just, it's like, and what's crazy is they're like, well, how do we guarantee anything about this? And the big thing drops, Barb throws in, then we'll just drop the bombs ourselves to secure that this happens. And, and it was Betty's idea. Was, and, yeah, it, it was uh, Barb, wall. you mean, because Betty is the Betty is the uh, overseer. So Barb, like his wife, drops this thing. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm what? sorry, yeah. I'm like, what? How, are you serious? Like this, and, and I know. Her girlfriend was in shock. I was like, are you kidding me? And that scene got me. I was like, damn. And at that moment, she says all, like, this is where Moldaver says at that moment, once he says that, all, all of a sudden like, oh yeah, he's so excited to see you. And he's like, all the Vault 30, like your father was from the original Vault Tech company. And they handpicked people to become the overseers of these vaults. Yeah, Norm and, enters the the room too. This yeah. is all going on at the same time. Yeah, it's all happening Norm at the same time. Norm enters Vault Thirty One. Yeah, he enters in with Vault Thirty One. He sees all the frozen bodies, and then literally the ghouls like in shock turns around, and it's Lucy's father as like a younger version of him, like 
height and he was the assistant to his wife and he's just like oh my god like i'm so happy to meet you and then it connected me i was like betty is the assistant betty is the current overseer at 33. it's the same yeah. like that's the point it's connecting all the dots and she's like she's in and lucy's just in shock like so this is this is literally all like planned and then jamal david just drops the drops the bomb on it again it says your when your mother was asking questions about some of the stuff he heard she knew something was up and when your father wouldn't answer she's like i know something's wrong and she took you and the kids and left and she ended up finding civilization out there and it was at shady sands where she was there helping run shady sands and when the father asked her to come home and she said no he she has really hank uh is lucy's father basically told voltec to drop the nuke on shady sands right and it just set into motion basically killing maximus uh, nearly killing maximus's family his family's dead basically setting up all people from vault 4 to go in into shady sands and basically going and and essentially kill really killing his wife turning her into a ghoul right by that radiation poisoning that happens and you know moldaver basically swore revenge from this point on because the only way that they can use this cold fusion is if someone from vault -Tec puts in their passcode which is her father knows the passcode and that's why he, she took her and it just it was made perfect sense they tied in all the loose ends when it comes to the father and vault 31 making sense with it now there's still a lot of stuff going on which sets up for the next season but the point is like it explains all that and it was messed up with the whole fact that lucy's mom was the ghoul right that was messed up and i was like damn it makes Moldaver now instantly like I understand completely why you're doing the all this. But just like in Fallout fashion, right? So then Lucy says, just tell the damn code. And he tells her the code. She starts turning on the fusion, the cold fusion. And instantly, and I was like, the brother of steel is on their way. Like this is gonna about to get really bad. And now all of a sudden you're seeing them show up and it's just pure chaos. They're fighting each other. This is exactly what you want to see in Fallout. These two different factions fighting killing each other and in the whole time like while while this is happening hank is telling saying i got rid of everyone because you there's there's no use in the fighting if we kill everybody then there's no fighting anymore right and it's just him trying to explain his way out of the situation um and, and literally like they're one of the steals clapping everybody and then all of a sudden the ghoul's there like this is where like oh this like the ghoul just showed up he just got there in time and then he just starts Oh, you know, I I was I used to wear a suit like you guys, and the suit I wore had a fault in the chest piece. Let me see if that is the same case. And just fires, and then the first guy gets killed, and he's like, oh, I see that, and then knocks the lights out and just kills everybody. I would have loved to see lights on and maybe got a little bit more like seeing the ghoul do some of his badassery, but it was a great scene, right? And so then all of a sudden, you know, like Max shows up. He unlocks the door to get Hank out of the out of the thing. No, not not maybe talking to Lucy, making sure everything's okay. Lucy could have helped him out a little bit by like, you know, like don't don't open the door for him. But she just doesn't say anything. He opens the door, and then you know, Hank gets into the the T sixties suit because his head got blown off, right? And he knocks Max out by one punch man punching him into the wall, knocks him out cold, and then the ghoul shows up and shoots him to stun him. Right. And, you know, he was like, I remember your face back in the day. Like you were my wife's assistant. You're cleaning my damn laundry like for my wife. And he was basically trying to like to basically find where his family is because he has been looking for his family this whole time. And then it ties in the ghoul's backstory. It's like that's why this episode was doing so well. It was tying into everyone's motivations, why they're doing this. And, you know, the Hank flies off and, you know, the ghoul's like, well, it's easier to catch a to catch a it's larger prey when you let give a live bait basically calling him bait Moldaver sh shows up she's wounded she turns on the cold fusion turning on basically power for the entire town while the ghoul and lucy get out of there and it ends with maximus just walking up to Moldaver as she's dying and he's just like looking into the, like the distance and all the blood brothers you like maximus killed the, the leader he's like he's like the next guy and and he is thank god they did this but Maximus is like, no, no, please don't. And then, because at least then it, it does create that, like, he's not, like, he he's now going to have that struggle. Like, where did Lucy go? 
Like he doesn't know that she she did she told him I'll I'll come find you. She he didn't hear that. All he knows is she's gone and now he's left behind with Brother Steel and that's it. And that's how it fades off. But the best part is Hank when he flies down, he's walking towards New Vegas. And that's how the season ends. And this is where, like I said before, it gets me nervous because once you start drifting into New Vegas, your means you need to now connect the games to this, right? Because that's the fear I have. New Vegas is one of the most cult classics that people love because it was a fantastic game with so many factions. They need to come out and they need to explain themselves on this whole time loop issue because if they don't, it's going to cause a lot of people to get angry. Like you, you're gonna need if you do New Vegas, you're gonna have to make connections to all the factions that were there in the games. You're gonna have to figure out like how you continue this, right? And I feel like that's something that I'm a little afraid of. But damn, did that season finale hit? Uh, I want to get your guys' opinion on that because that was a great season finale for the show to get you excited because now Lucy and the Ghoul and, and CX four or four together. Maximus is now you know we're apparently gonna think. He's a knight. Hank is going towards, you know, New Vegas. Where is he going? Like, where the hell is Thaddeus? Like, where was he going? Is and, and Norman's now stuck in a cryo chamber until someone unlocks the door? Like, damn, we got everyone's doing stuff. Everyone's somewhere. We got to find out what the hell's next, right? So, Haki, what did you think about the season finale? Did they end it on the right note? Oh yeah, man. I mean, like you said, man. There's a lot of things going on, but everything seems to be kind of in line for everyone's story to, to be successful. So um, we're gonna see this last episode was huge in action. Um, you know, this is a, supposed to be an action packed, um, you know, uh, episode and it was. So very excited. Um, you know, this is the type of stuff we were looking for Halo, uh, you know, to kind of stay close to the game and, and give the fans what they want. So any fans of Fallout, um, if you haven't watched this, uh, the show is definitely an amazing show. Um, the big reveal about, uh, you know, vaults 31 through 33 and, and kind of what Hank did and, and uh, what Vault Take did uh, was a really, really great writing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the episode, best ending, uh, you know, of an episode for, you know, a video game adaptation, I think, so far. And Langella Kill, what did you feel about the season finale? I mean, it was great. Um... I hate to be like the, the nitpick some things, but there are a couple things that I really wish they explained a little bit better. Moldeva, who is, again, at the same time that, that Howard was alive. How is she alive? I originally thought that she was a ghoul too, but she doesn't have any of the mutations of a ghoul. So how did she get mm -hmm. access to a crypto chamber um, that the vault -Tec people had is kind of the question that I had because, again, I thought she was originally a ghoul, but then she didn't have the mutations and also she died from a you know, getting a shot in the gut, right? And that it would take a lot more to kill a ghoul. So it's like, okay, she's not a ghoul, so how did she stay alive this long? Um, that's kind of the big question that I had that wasn't really answered. And the second thing that was kind of a funny thing, stupid thing, was the tech that, how, that, um, that Lucy's dad gets, Hank, you know, it busts open the door. No one's in the body tank, right? Like, because cause Maximus is behind it, so it busts through the door and, and falls over with no one in it. Um, and that's how that's how Hank gets in. Well, the head in the, the head suit. was blown off. The head was blown off. It was just it was just the body was left in it. That was what happened. It was that there was no head. It got shot off, and he basically was just like it was like a walking corpse, and he was pushing it forward, and it, it opened oh, the door. Maximus was pushing it forward. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess that one. But the Moldavian one, I don't really get. But outside of those two things, this was a great episode, and I think the best episode of the entire show. Um, I mean, they really did. They, they answered a lot of the plot questions. They extended the plots to go even further and deeper with each party kind of getting their due here. And that's kind of what the big thing, the Brothers of Steel finally getting really into the action and, and seeing more of, of what makes them uh, unique as well. So that's all good stuff. To me, a very strong finish to the season, you know, outside of those kind of little comical moments, um, but really strong overall. Yeah, man, I, I got to say, I am excited for season two. I know it. Not official yet, but I can almost guarantee it's going to happen, and I can't wait to see how they continue this. I'm a little afraid about the games now and connection, because yeah, I might not be on the same level as I am with Halo, like the Halo lore, and saying you got to mirror this thing, but it will cause a lot of resentment 
from the Fallout fan stands that will be like, dude, you're going to capsize all these different you're retelling games. A story. You're, and retelling you're retelling the story. story in your own way, and yeah. I might not be a fan of it. And I completely understand that. I, I do yeah. get that. So that is the fear. But man, this was a great show. It, it definitely got me out of my Halo funk. It got me into the Fallout feels. I might even go back and play 76 just to just to experience some Fallout games. Everyone's now asking, no, when's, ne- when's Fallout 5 coming out? Like, that's kind of now the, the, the feeling that everyone's starting to get now. We'll be in retirement um, homes by that yeah, it might be, yeah, we might be a long ways away. But what do you think about the Fallout TV show? Did it meet your expectations? Did it meet the standard that you all wanted to have for the show? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. You can also support us by becoming a member and being anointed just like Thaddeus as a member of the Mars Man crew. But until no next time, yeah, no band required, no no uh, searing of your back or your neck. Um, <laughs> until next time, this is Mars Man signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>